If it's your first time here, my name is Trinity, and today we're going to be talking about how to stop seeking people's approval. Now, if you struggle with this, I already know how it feels. Bring it on in, because I'm here to tell you right now, I struggled with that a lot growing up. Have you felt like you could never amount to people's expectations? Constant fear, wondering if they like you or don't like you. That is something I always used to struggle with, and I'm finally growing out of that mindset. So if you struggle with this, I advise you to stay tuned because I got some gems to lay on you. So let's get into the video. So coming from a background where my family has a list of accomplishments, I mean a happy list, I would find myself kind of measuring myself up to this list. You know, I have valedictorians in my family, I have people who are business, business owners, things of that nature. Everybody, mostly in my family, has some type of degree, whether it's a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, something. And I noticed that I was getting really insecure with myself if I didn't meet the expectations that was already established in my family. And so I had this constant fear of thinking, well, what if I'm like a loser or a failure or anything like that to my family? And I had to come to the realization you're not. <laughs> we create our own goals. We set our own accomplishments for ourselves. And even though it doesn't look like the next person, doesn't mean it's not a goal. Doesn't mean it's not an accomplishment. I've struggled with that for a long period of time, but I had to come to the grasp of knowing that God made me individually by myself. And the life that he has for me does not reflect the life that he has for others. So I came comfortable with knowing that I'm okay with the goals and accomplishments I have set for myself. I'm okay with not looking like anybody else in my family. My goals and accomplishments will reflect Trinity, me as an individual. So remember that when you see yourself constantly comparing, especially from a family that has such a heavy background of accomplishments, remember that you are, you're, you are, you are your own individual. And you can't change that. And love that. Embrace that. Okay? <laughs> and just to elaborate on that, I know the saying, mothers knows best. Let me tell you something. My mama is the most educated, beautiful woman that I know. And she don't know everything. <laughs> she don't know everything. She probably want the best for me, but sometimes the best what she, you know, envision is not what God envisioned for my life. So knowing that I am discovering myself, I'm in my twenties, I'm learning that it's okay to drift off from the vision that your mother or your parents put on you. It's okay to go and explore your own vision. It's beautiful a matter of fact, because you find your own happiness and not based on anybody else's happiness. So I just wanna add that on there because I know I struggle with that a lot, detaching from my mother's dreams. And she's becoming, you know, more wiser on how to parent with kids such as myself that's a little rebellious that wants to go off and drift and do their own thing. Constantly wondering about is your dreams even worth anybody even paying attention to? Let me <laughs> let you know. Stop caring what people think, what people might you know, say about you, that doesn't matter. I'm taking a big risk putting on myself on YouTube. And it's not really a risk to me, but having being a person that constantly care about what people think, and my hair intact, I'm missing like a hell of nails, got two left, but I don't care because I came to a version of myself where I love myself so much where I'm ready to find me. I'm ready to find my purpose. And I just came to the realization too, I don't know me. I don't know me. And that's a scary thing to be in this body for 28 years and not know who you are. So seeking, a pe seeking people's approval will detach you from knowing who you are. So I encourage you to follow your dreams, go for them, F the naysayers, and keep pushing. Keep faith and prayer and God will put you on the purpose, the alignment, the path that you need to be in order for you to see yourself, in order for you to know who you are, and in order for you to know your purpose. Because I feel like we all trying to discover, like, what should I be doing with life? Who I should be dating? Who my friend group? What, you know, what I should be working? Things of that nature. We always trying to figure out what, who are we? What are we here for? Follow your dreams and don't give up. 
and I don't care how ridiculous the dream is. If you want to fly kites professionally, Google that. See how you can get paid for that. Okay? Now, I was kind of placed with this stigma on me as a social butterfly. <laughs> I People... I have an inviting spirit from what I've been told and people want to be my friend you know, and want to date me but you can't invite everybody in your circle in your in your in your space because people will sometimes see that light on you and they want to take it away for their own use or just some people just want to see you miserable and I'm not allowing that anymore I used to allow people in my space that I knew did not meant me no good I knew they just wanted to be around my energy because they wasn't in a good space and they just felt like, oh, Trinity seems like a very positive outgoing person. Let me get around her. Now with that energy says, you better get in tact with your happy energy so we can put that together. Like my next relationship, I'm in the midst of finding my own happiness. I want my next person to come in my life with his own happiness, you know, so we can, we can pour in each other cup. That's what I'm looking for. Energy that can pour into me and I can pour into them. Me having that stigma of being a social butterfly, I started finding myself dating back to grammar school, looking for people's approval. Wondering if they liked me. Wondering if I was cute enough to be in the group. Does that matter? I think not. <laughs> my own group is myself. God and me. That's the only team I need. And I always used to feel like I had to fit this image in order for me to be accepted by people. And being yourself, is the most acceptance you will ever receive. Being the silly version of yourself, being the classy version of yourself, and if people can't embrace that, that's not your crowd. That's not your group of people. Let people embrace you for who you are. Let people love on you for who you are. I've been told that I am very positive and I give great you know, advice and things like that. And I appreciate the comments. And I do feel like people who give a reflection of who you are as a person does kind of help build on your character and how you can define yourself as a person. But not all the time. Some people can have an image of you that's not true and you just let them have it. That's part of separating from seeking people's approval when people have an image of you. I got some people that possibly don't like, like me. I might be too outgoing. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> I could be a little blunt. So, you know, people do not like, you know, straightforward information like that. I want to be more emotionally intelligent in the area because being blunt, it's not what it's always made up to be. You know, people think like, oh, I want a friend that's direct and it's going to tell me the truth. There's a way to tell people the truth without hurting their feelings. And I'm learning that. I am still learning that, so bear with me. I always notice about myself is I tend to dim my light to make other people feel comfortable. And that comes with getting that acceptance from people. I would not dim my light for anybody else to make themselves feel comfortable. I did that in relationships. I did that in friendships. And I won't be doing that anymore. I even do it around family sometimes. I'm not dimming my light to make you feel comfortable. That's not fair to me. That's not fair to God. God, like, I put all this sun, sunshine on you. This ray of sunshine is gleaming off that skin. You see, yeah. But people can be intimidated. And you can feel the intimidation. You can feel the constant comparison between you two. Because they always feel like they got to compete with you. I even notice in conversations where I talk about the accomplishments, the blessings that God has put in my life. And this is not to brag. I'm doing it very humbly. But I'm just embracing the fact. I, if I can't talk about my accomplishments with you, that makes me feel like I shouldn't even be talking to you. I can say all these accomplishments and I can notice in the conversation someone constantly comparing. Like, oh, okay, for example, let's say, um, oh, I have this big old burger from this high class restaurant and it was so good girl we should go try it sometime oh girl I, I i went to paris and had me a big burger girl i wasn't i wasn't comparing the burger all i was asking for is you to come with me to go try this restaurant and we're in chicago why are you comparing a burger from chicago to paris this is just an example that's probably a bad example but that's just I can think off the top of my head. <laughs> but I just feel like people that I have conversation with that have their constant comparisons to me or to anybody else 
cut those people off. Let them go heal. Let them go discover themselves because you're going to constantly be seeking their approval by dimming your light. And when I say seeking their approval by dimming your light, you're going to dim your light so they won't feel the need to even talk like that with you. I'm not doing that. How about I just cut you off? That's so easy and simple. Subtraction is easy. That's sad. I'm learning how to be more picky with my friends in relationships too, in my interactions with anybody. I feel like you cannot go around sharing your energy with everybody. Everybody do not appreciate your energy or respect that. And for example, like I feel people that know that they can be there for you in the time of need, if they don't respect your boundaries, they're gonna always disrespect you even when you know you need them. I'm not gonna lie, this might consider pride, but I'd rather go do it myself. I will find another method if you constantly disrespect my boundaries. Boundaries are so important when, you know, not accepting everybody's approval. Because when you let everybody come in and just tackle your boundaries, you're starting to feel like, oh, I have to get their approval. I have to let them know like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I'm gonna apply that to my life. No. I have boundaries because I'm discovering who I am. And when you start accepting yourself for who you are, you are finding yourself. You are discovering who you are. And I noticed about myself, I'm finding me. And it feels great, guys. When I say it feels great, if you're struggling with this, I'm going to tell you right now, when you have that awakening, like, wait a minute, let me stop doing this so I can start doing this. It's a great feeling. And this kind of can go with family, too. Family is always there, right? I have a very big family. I'm very family oriented. And some family can, you know, play with those boundaries, want a little hopscotch in them boundaries. And I had to realize, like, I love my family. That would never change. But I can limit my interactions with you until you learn how to respect my boundaries. That doesn't mean I don't love you. That doesn't mean I would never talk to you. I would never cut my family off. That's one thing I would never do because family is family. And we can't choose the family we are born in. But what I can do is control the interactions and limit the disrespect by setting those boundaries. And I am proud of myself to come this far because I think people can still see me as this little girl when I'm almost 30. And... <laughs> I am a grown woman that pays her own bills, you know, got my own credit score, got a career. <laughs> and people seem to forget that. So, it's no this, all love. But <laughs> I had to create those boundaries in order for me to keep keeping that range of accepting myself and loving myself. So with that all being said, these are some things that I've used to learn how to stop looking for everybody's approval. It damaged my self-esteem when I was going around looking for people's approval. It damaged my ability to think for myself. And I had to wonder, like, Trinity, it's more to life than everybody's acceptance. And I had to also learn that only acceptance I need is the man upstairs, is God. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope some of these gems really help you in learning how to not accept everybody's approval and learn how to accept yourself for who you are. And I hope you can like, comment, and subscribe as well. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button below, please, please. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed this video. I am out. Peace.